In this video, I'd like to go over the technique of back titration with you. It is actually excess reactant titration, and there is an application that I wanted to discuss with you, and so that we can uh, cover this topic of back titration. And in this example, I want to uh, bring this application that we have a piece of limestone. Limestone is a mixture of calcium carbonate and other components. So imagine that uh, you have in little specks of calcium carbonate uniformly spread throughout this limestone. And we can take a sample of this limestone and crush it and analyze it. So let's say that we break off a corner of this limestone and this is a little piece of this now, which is 2.75 grams. So I start with 2.75 gram piece of limestone and we crush that. So usually in the lab, we don't work with chunks of materials. We crush it so that our reactions take place faster and so we get this powderized uh, limestone. Next, uh, we add that to um, a reaction flask. So this could be a Erlenmeyer flask. So we transfer that into the flask. And the flask contains 100 15 milliliters of 0 0.500 molarity HCl. So a reaction will take place between hydrochloric acid and calcium carbonate. I'm going to write the reaction for you. Calcium carbonate plus hydrochloric acid, aqueous solid, goes to calcium chloride which is soluble, plus water liquid. And the mole ratios are 2 to 1. So this hydrochloric acid, the amount of it is designed in such a way that it would be excess. So for this type of technique to work with the back titration, we want to make sure that the reactant is in excess. So calcium carbonate would be limiting. And we have 2.75 grams of the crushed limestone, but please note that we don't know the amount of calcium carbonate in this limestone. And the whole point of doing this analysis is to determine the percent calcium carbonate in limestone. So in order to get the percent, calcium carbonate. I want to find the mass of calcium carbonate in grams. That's pure calcium carbonate in grams. And since I'm taking 2.75 grams of the sample, I divide it by that and I multiply by 100. This would be the percent calcium carbonate in that 2.75 or in the whole limestone. But, but to calculate it, I'm using the 2.75 gram sample. So the point of this is I want to find out how many grams of calcium carbonate are going to react with this. But remember that hydrochloric acid is excess and calcium carbonate is limiting. So in this stage, I really don't have any information to relate to grams of calcium carbonate. I do know that the excess hydrochloric acid is 115 milliliters of 0 0.500 molarity. So once this reaction takes place and it gets complete, the next step is to conduct a titration now. So we're going to take the leftover HCl. This is what's left over from Let's call this step one and step two is titration. So we go through a process of titration using a burette and we use the same flask because the flask contains 
the excess hydrochloric acid. So I just used the same flask and I uh, titrated against sodium hydroxide, which is my titrant. That's what's in the burette. And I explained that to you in the last video. Product is sodium chloride plus water. Liquid, aqueous, aqueous, aqueous. And the mole ratio for this reaction is a simple one to one. So the leftover hydrochloric acid was titrated with sodium hydroxide. And the information from the lab is that when I use 0 0.300 molarity sodium hydroxide, it took 20.10 milliliter of it to reach the end point of the titration. So now I'm ready to do my calculation. So there's like steps of calculation that I want to go over with you. So having a molarity and volume here, it gives me the initial HCl. And I'm going to work with millimoles. Just like the last uh, video I showed you, millimoles are very convenient. So I'm going to use the millimole concept here too. And the 0 0.300 molarity and 21 ml, that gives me certain amount of millimoles that are equivalent to the leftover. So you start initially with uh, the HCl that's equivalent to 115 ml and 0 0.500 molarity. And then whatever is left over of it, we're going to titrate it. And we did. And it took 20.10 milliliter and 0 0.300 molarity. So this would be equivalent to the leftover. So I'm going to go ahead and get my millimoles. So my millimoles that we call initial HCl millimole is 115 milliliter multiplied by 0 0.500 moles per liter. So 115 times 0.5 is 57.5 millimole. This is what I started with. And uh, I'm also going to calculate the millimole of NaOH. So millimole of NaOH, this is from step two. The first calculation was from, from step one. So this is equal to 0 0.300 moles per liter multiplied by 20.10 milliliter. And that gives me 6.03 millimole. So because of the one to one mole ratio, I know that millimole of HCl is equal to millimole of NaOH. This is from the titration for step two. Because the mole ratio are one to one. So essentially millimole of NaOH is equal to leftover HCl millimole, which is equal to 6.03 millimole. That's what I just calculated. So the logic here is that I started with 57.5 millimoles of hydrochloric acid right here. Okay, this is this portion right here. And I reacted some of it with calcium carbonate that was in the limestone sample. And then I took the leftover HCl, whatever was left over, and I reacted it with sodium hydroxide and it took 6.03 millimole, which is equivalent to that. So it should be logical that the difference between those two, two millimoles is the amount of HCl that was reacted with calcium carbonate. So the conclusion that I can make here is millimole of HCl that reacted in step one is equal to initial HCl minus leftover 
HCl. Both of these are millimoles. So this is an important conclusion that you should be aware of. So we will now do the calculation 57.5 minus 6.03. So this gives me 51.47 millimole. Okay. And uh, this should be only good to one digit after the decimal because of the 57.5. So I'm going to carry over the seven, the hundreds place so that I won't have any round off errors. Okay. So now I can see, I can work with the first reaction that I had, this is the one that has the one to two mole ratio of HCl with calcium carbonate. And I can calculate moles or millimoles of calcium carbonate reacted. This is what I want to find that I can relate to percent calcium carbonate. So this is equal to, now I have 51.47 millimole of HCl that reacted with it. And now the ratio, the mole ratios are two mole of HCl react with one mole of calcium carbonate. So these cancel. The mole parts uh, go away. Um, I'm sorry, should have just canceled the HCLs, of course, go away. Okay. And these moles go away. So we have millimole of calcium carbonate in this step. So let's do that. This is just taking 51.47, dividing it by 2. That gives me 25.74 millimole. So I'm a couple more steps away from solving the problem. So I'm going to go ahead and convert to this to grams. Grams of calcium carbonate is equal to 25.74 millimoles. And the, here I can say that 1,000 millimoles is one mole. So now I can bring in the molar mass of calcium carbonate, which is 100.09 grams per mole, but I should have written it the other way around. So it would be 100.09 grams per mole. So the answer for this part is equal to 2.575 grams. So I have 2.575 grams of calcium carbonate in that limestone sample that I took, which was 2.75 grams. So now I'm ready to do the percent. So percent calcium carbonate is 2.575 grams of pure calcium carbonate in a sample size of 2.75 gram of calcium carbonate. Now this is this is really not calcium carbonate, but it's the sample. Remember, this is the impure stuff. So let's do that and report it to three sig fig. It would be ninety three point seven percent. So this is a method by which uh, we can determine composition of one component in a mixture. And the point of this was that, first of all, the calcium carbonate that I took, the sample was not pure. And I needed to conduct the titration. But before I do my titration, in step two, I used excess hydrochloric acid to dissolve the calcium carbonate. And then I back titrated the leftover hydrochloric acid with sodium hydroxide. So this, that's why it's called back titration, because we titrate the leftover. And once I get my quantity of what the millimoles that were left over, I subtracted it, 
this is an important step from the initial hydrochloric acid millimoles and then I was able to get the millimoles that was reacted of hydrochloric acid and we know this is another important thing from the step two from titration the one mole of HCl reacts with one mole of NaOH so the millimoles or one to one mole or one to one millimole which means that if you have 6.03 millimole of any NaOH that reacted, it's going to be 6.03 millimole of HCl, just like the result that you see right in this line right here. So once I have this figured out, I do my subtraction, the 6.03, I subtract from the initial hydrochloric millimole, I get 51.47, and then I use my 2 to 1 mole ratio, because remember, we have to use reaction 1, to find out the millimole of calcium carbonate. So we have a two to one mole ratio there. And then I figure out millimole of calcium carbonate, and then this is this amount, and then I convert it to grams of calcium carbonate. And uh, from there, I just did the percent. So I hope this problem makes the back titration process clear for you. That's it.